Hi everyone, it's Rachel here and welcome to episode number 26 of the Walk the Talk podcast. So in today's show, I wanted to just share a little bit of personal experience with you on a subject that I'm sure most of you will be able to identify with. Um, And I'm going to talk about um, a period of my life a few years ago that was quite an uncomfortable period um, for me to go through. But um, I wanted to share this with you because you may or may not be experiencing the same thing, or you may have experienced a similar thing in the past. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that by sharing my personal experience that it might help you to sort of make decisions about your own life moving forward and if you're feeling stuck at the moment with anything in life I know we we often talk about fat loss, weight loss um, and improving sort of your body shape on this podcast but this can kind of be applied to any area of your life Um, so without any further ado let's get going so This has happened to me a few times in different aspects and different areas of my life, but I just I wanted to sort of touch on a health uh, from it from a health point of view. So, if you don't know me, you probably won't know this, but most of my listeners do already know that I have irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, and it's something that I was diagnosed with over ten years ago um, when I was in my final year at university. So, if that serves me right, that would have been two thousand and six. 2005-2006 and it was as the result of a bout of food poisoning that I got when I was in Thailand on holiday, surprise surprise, uh, which led to becoming very very unwell um, sort of ever since with all sorts of different issues with my gut, all sorts of issues with my stomach and um, this went on you know, the problems that I had with my gut and with my stomach went on for a very, very long time. So unpredictable diarrhea, bloating, cramps every time I ate, um, to the point where it actually affected my life in a massive way that I honestly never saw coming. So we'll start at the beginning and I'll keep it as brief and short as I can. Um, But when I got back from Thailand, I was actually fine I was fine there was you know I had the food poisoning I had the gastroenteritis and you know within a few days I was feeling sort of back to slightly normal as normal as you can get for me and um, it wasn't until I came home and I was actually on the bus to Glasgow so it was about not even half an hour 20 minutes on the bus from where I lived at the time into Glasgow city centre and it was actually with my mum we were going shopping And this wave of, um, wave of nausea came over me. For those of you that have IBS, you'll know exactly what I mean. Your gut and your bowel goes into a cramp. You start to get the sweats and you just know that within either a few seconds or a few minutes, you're going to need to get to a toilet very, very quickly. However, it's not so easy when you're on the motorway on a bus So this is where I started to struggle with panicking that I was going to have an accident. And this was a one-off. I didn't have an accident. I was absolutely fine. Um, You know, as quickly as the wave of nausea came over me, it actually left me a few minutes later and I felt fine. And I got to Glasgow and went about my shopping with my mum and didn't even give it a second thought. But little did I know that that moment was going to shape and change the rest of my life. And still to this day, uh, still to this day, I still, still suffer with anxiety over this exact thing. Now, I know that it probably won't happen that I will get ill in public because it hasn't ever. Um, We're talking over a decade here of worrying about it and it still never happened. Um, But try telling that my brain that. However, I think about it and react in it in a completely different way now. And uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. So... Over the course of the last however many years, 12 years it's been since I was diagnosed with IBS, in the, in the first sort of few years, I spent a lot of time going back and forth to the doctor and seeing different specialists and 
having tests done for all sorts of different things and nothing was coming up. I was getting the wrong advice from my GP and I was not, I, w- I wasn't getting any better. I tried various different random supplements from the internet. I tried hypnotherapy, I tried talking therapy, I saw a counsellor through the NHS. I was on antidepressants, anti-anxiety drugs, I was on tranquilizers. you name it. I've tried it, or I had tried it at that point. And I felt like nothing was working. I spent the vast majority of my final year at university at home and having to get extensions for assignments and all sorts and I felt so guilty um I actually passed my degree (laughs) thankfully but it was it was a very hard year and a few years later a few years down the line I wasn't any better and I honestly felt like nothing was ever going to work so in a way I actually gave up I can remember the moment I can remember the thoughts that were going through my head And it was something along the lines of, I've tried everything. I have spent a fortune on supplements and private healthcare and seeing specialists and counsellors. I have bought every pill and tried every potion in the book and I am not feeling any better. In fact, I'm actually probably feeling worse. So what is the point? What is the point in trying what is the point because nothing is working and I'm just going to have to accept that this is my life now and actually my that's what my GP said to me she said you're going to have to just learn how to live with this and I am not for those of you that know me I am not one to wallow I am not a wallower I am uh right here is the problem let's find a solution, let's take action and let's get this fixed. And I had done that so many times repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly after this that I got to that point that what is the point? What is the point? I've tried everything now and I'm going to have to just learn to live with it because this is my life now. And I think you can relate to this. I think most people can relate to this when it comes to weight loss, losing weight, If you have been on a diet for your entire life, and I know a lot of people who listen to this podcast have been, whether that be a year, 10 years or decades, you will have and possibly you might have, you might be in this moment thinking the same way about losing weight. Maybe you've tried absolutely everything and you've just, you sort of got to the point now where you think enough's enough. I've tried everything, I've been on, I've tried every diet under the sun and I have failed every single time. What is the point in trying something different? What is what is the point in trying something new? And I completely, completely understand that. If you've tried everything like I had when it came to fixing the problem that was going on in my insides, um... And you get to that point where you think, I'm just going to learn to live with it because this is me, this is who I am. So maybe I just need to sort of fit this identity and you might be thinking maybe I'll be overweight forever. Maybe I just need to get used to this. Maybe I need to be miserable forever. And um, whether that lasts for a week, a month or decades, you know, maybe you get stuck in that mindset of, oh, well, fuck it. This is me. This is how it's going to be. And I'm just going to be this person forever. And you sort of feel upset about it and angry. But you sort of accept the fact that this is it. If you're there right now with your weight loss goal or your body goal or your health or whatever it is, maybe it's your job, maybe it's your relationship, um, I would like to tell you that it doesn't need to stop here. A few years after I um, I got to that point and, uh, you know, I'm talking... I probably spent quite a number of years in that mindset of this is how I'm going to live now so I just went you know I might as well not even bother trying to eat healthy because nothing's working anyway my stomach's going to be upset anyway so I might as well just eat crap and a few years later I came across I listened to a podcast actually 
um, I'm not going to name names or anything like that. I listened to a podcast and it was a podcast interview with some people who claimed that they could help me or help people transform their life and, and get rid of things like IBS. And I was really sceptical, really, really sceptical. Um, and it was a lot of money um, to sign up with this company to um, ultimately get coached and shown what to do and um, and I couldn't afford it and I put it on a credit card and I went and did it and that didn't work either <laughs> so I know you probably thought I was going to say and that was it everybody loved happily ever after amen no actually that um, although my symptoms of IBS improved the whole um, experience that I went through with those coaches uh, was not a positive experience in the long term and actually sort of <laughs> ended up making things worse. And that put me even further back. So if you can sort of relate that to being on a diet and trying something else and trying something else and getting shot down again, that's where I was. I thought I'd found the ultimate solution, but it wasn't. However, however, on a positive note, had I not listened to that podcast, that one episode that I came across when I was obviously Googling how to get rid of IBS, I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing today right now and I would certainly be still suffering with daily bouts of IBS because not only did I listen to that episode of the podcast but I listened to every single one of them previous and right up to this present day actually I think there's about 400 episodes and I empowered myself with information, um, information that you can't get on Google information that your doctor that my doctor wasn't telling me and eventually I sort of put a plan into place for myself and and that um it took another few years you know we're talking this is a 12 year period this is a long time I empowered myself with this information and then I decided right okay I can tackle this bit by myself I can tackle this bit by myself however I need help here I need to find out the answers to these questions. I maybe need to talk to this person. And I sort of built myself a plan. Um, and this involved this involved um, another, getting another coach. I, I actually have had three different coaches. Um, it involved me reading a lot of books. It involved me doing a lot of research, listening to podcasts, uh, reading blogs, social media all sorts of things and ultimately that was what changed my life and changed I suppose the outlook that I had um, about my IBS and I wasn't in that that sort of mindset anymore of oh this is it this is my life now I was in the mindset of okay here is a plan that I've sort of created by myself by empowering myself with information let's trial and error a few different things and it took me a while but I identified my main trigger I identified what I could do about it and I spent years I think it was a two-year period almost um being very consistent and I still have bouts of irritable bowel syndrome you've probably seen recently I've had a bit of a flare-up again I know exactly what to do to stop that from happening again. I live a much better quality of life now, and I'm not just saying this to brag. Very rarely do I ever feel unwell when I'm out, which means that I very rarely feel that overwhelming panic. Um, I don't even give a second thought, really, to going out, really, to do, to do anything now. I went for years and years without even going to a restaurant to eat because I was too scared to eat. And now eating out and going to a restaurant is like one of my favourite things to do. It's always been one of my favourite things to do, but I couldn't do it before because I was too scared. I lived a very sheltered life for a long time with anxiety and depression in relation to the IBS that I had. And I honestly thought that that was my life. And I can tell you right now that no matter what it is that you're struggling with and where you are, whether that might be losing weight in a relationship, maybe you want to change jobs, maybe your job's causing you issues, you're unhappy with your body, you feel like a failure, you feel like there's no point in trying, you, you're at that point where it's like, what's the point? 
I would just like you to know that there is a point because if you, I want you to think about it like this, right? What happens if you just decide that this is it? Do you honestly, do you honestly want to feel the way you're feeling right now for the rest of your life? Because that is a choice. It's a choice. And I know it might not feel like it right now, but you are choosing to stay like that by having that viewpoint or that outlook on where you are because you can you can make improvements and create change you just need someone you need someone like I had a coach you need someone or a friend or a colleague or a family member to say listen I know that you're not feeling good right now I know that you can't see the wood for the trees and I know that you feel like you have failed and are failing but this is not the end this can change, you can make progress and you can get to where you want to be. And that is the difference between what I do in Walk the Talk Life and what diet companies will do. They will shame and guilt you into joining their clubs. I will empower you with information and education, most of the time for free via the podcast and all the free resources on the website and social media to help you sort of make informed decisions for yourself, right? Okay, this is where I'm at this is what I've tried so far. I know that that doesn't work. What can I do now? What books can I read? Who can I ask for help? What questions can I ask? Where do I actually want to be and why? There's another really big one um, that's probably for a whole other episode. But why do I want to get to where I want to be? Why do I want to do that? For me, I wanted to eradicate IBS from my life and anxiety and depression. Not just so that I no longer had IBS, anxiety and depression. But I wanted to eradicate these things from my life so that I could have more freedom, so that I could travel the world because that is a massive part of my life and I couldn't do it for years because I was too scared. I wanted to be able to go out and eat in restaurants with my friends. Um, you know, it got to the point where my friends didn't even invite me out anymore. Not to be nasty, but just because they didn't want to stress me out because they knew that I wanted to come, but I couldn't. I wanted to I wanted to get rid of IBS anxiety and depression so that I could get out and live my life again. Um, you know, not just to be rid of it. And it's the same way if your goal is weight loss. Like, why do you want to lose weight? You don't just want to be smaller. You don't just want to fit into your clothes better. Yes, you want those things, but why do you want them? And it's really, really useful to sit down and write and actually write about it and write, why do I want to, why do I want to fit into my clothes better? What is the reason for that? Why do I want to lose weight? Why do I want to be, you know, lots of people um, contact me and say, I want to be, and then they tell me a, a weight and numbers and pounds, um, stones and pounds. Write that down, like, why do you want to be nine stone seven? What is the reason for that? Is it because your Slimming World teacher told you that? Or is it because you actually want to be that weight for a specific reason? Why do you want to get fitter? What is the reason? Do you want to be able to keep up with your kids? Do you want to feel more confident so that you can take your kids swimming without having to freak out every time you put a swimming costume on? Like, what is the reason? And have a think about that and understand that it does not have to end here. You are not a failure. Yes, you may feel like a failure. You may feel that you have failed because you every single diet that you have done so far hasn't worked. But it's not you who is the failure. It's the diet who has failed you. So just a little bit of food for thought today I hope that's been helpful for you I've got loads more that I can say on this subject but I'm going to keep this one short and sweet so thank you so much for listening if you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast then please share it on social media you'll see um, all the images across Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and I would really appreciate if you could share that and just before you go as well if you could leave me a little five star review on iTunes or Stitcher wherever you're watching this episode or listening to this episode um, I would really appreciate that as well because it, it helps me to distribute the podcast more so that more people can listen. That's it from me for this week. I will be back next week with 
a fantastic interview with Lester Savage, who was on the podcast a few weeks ago. We spoke about sleep. This time we are talking about something completely different, but I'm going to keep it a secret and I will see you next week. Just before you go, I wanted to let you know that the next Transform 21 group is now open for bookings. And if you would like to join me for some coaching um, in a group situation, a group format, and let me empower you with the education that you need in order to completely change your life, then just go to walkthetalklife.com forward slash T21 dash June. That is www.walkthetalklife.com forward slash T21 dash June. And you can find out all the information um, there on the page and you can sign up. I will make sure that I put the link in the show notes for you and I will see you on the next episode. Take care.